So I'm joined with England Rose and London Pulse's wing attack, Alicia Skulls. Welcome, Liz. Hey. Now, this is a bit different because the last two interviews I've done are with Fran and Elle, who have been sunning themselves in, in Australia, and you're sat in your car. <laughs> Tell us why you're in your car. Oh, yeah, because um, me and Barry House share with, like, uh, two boys in London, and everyone's in at the moment, so I just thought it'd be better in my car because it's a bit loud in there. No, that that's fine. Do you, do you reckon they would have, like, jumped our interview? Do you reckon they'd have come in? Well, one of them was actually gardening. I tried setting up in the kitchen and he just kept like walking in the back. So I thought, yeah, it's probably best I don't do that. Oh God, how have the youth changed? They're gardening, Jesus. We'd have been playing uh, video games and working out where we're going now. Um, no, they're so nice. <laughs> well, quick one before we get started. Tell me about Berry as a housemate. Is she good? Well, this is my third year with her now. Yeah, um, yeah, she's really good. She, she's, um, we finally started cooking actually this year. Took us a while, but yeah, yeah, she's good. Love living with her. I love that. Um, Rumi's teammate, so Barry Neal there as well. Um, well, let's start then with the game last weekend, that 53-52 win versus Loughborough Lightning. I mean, it was an incredible game for the neutral. Being there and commentating on it and seeing the fan base and how excited, you know, it was packed house in there, 3,500 people. But more importantly, how much it seemed to matter to, to you and the team. Yeah, I think we we definitely discussed in training that after how we'd started the season, um, that game was going to be like massive in how we just carried on, really. I think it was almost like we needed to prove to ourselves that we are still good enough and we are still very much like um, contending with the top teams, really. I think it was almost like I think the first game caught us off guard a bit. Like, we weren't... When I said, like... I don't mean we weren't prepared, but I just don't think we were, like, awake yet. Like, we weren't ready for how physical that first game was going to be. Like, in terms of game time, we'd done all the prep and everything, but I just think it really hurt us. Um, and it's almost like we sort of needed that. Um, yeah, I think we just we really needed, like, a wake-up call. And then on Saturday, um, the Luffra game, it was almost like we'd had, like, a kick-up sort of thing. And it's like we can't we can't just have a season of being like that, just letting it slack, getting battered, whatever. Uh, we really have to just prove to ourselves that, you know, we are competing. And if we if we can take Loughborough, then it'll set the tone for the rest of the season that we we are a team to be feared, and we can't just be seeing off the first game of the season, really. I lo I love that idea of the journey and that kind of you know we see off Loughborough and this is going to kickstart everything. Can you you talk about that first game, the opening weekend a few weeks ago against Manchester Thunder, and it was sixteen on four Sarahs. I remember talking about it afterwards, going, "Well, they're never going to do that again." So I kind of felt it was an easy fix. So I want to pick up on that young group then because the stuff that you're talking about there is really m mature for such a probably an inexperienced group in the terms of you know you look at the average age of your group with Liv and Barry and. And you, and then obviously Fumi, um, Izzy in the middle, who's been absolutely outstanding. Yeah. Does it, losing players like Chelsea Pittman this year and, and Lindsay Keeble, has that almost taken pressure off a little bit? And that you're just a young group. I know you've got Jay Clark, but but we won't say it brings the average up. I think, I think the main thing for us, and ever since I came to Pulse, it always has been like, there's no room for being inexperienced and like young because we all we're all in the same boat. I feel like when I when I had my first year at Thunder, it was almost like you was in the most comfortable environment. You were surrounded by people who'd been playing for years. There was room to be new and fresh and make mistakes because you would just get picked up by the people around you. But I think for us at Pulse, it's almost like there's you can't look around and think, oh God, I'm nervous, I'm new, I'm inexperienced, I'm having a nightmare, she'll help me, because we're all in the same boat. So I think, I think without realising, that's kind of been massive for us. Um, and me and Barry was literally having a conversation the other day, like about with Izzy, who's literally 17. It's not like she's walking in an environment where there's room to make mistakes. And I think that's like developed her so much, even just in the first three weeks. She's brand new in any other like any other team. I think it'd be it'd be fine. Like there'd be no pressure on her, no expectation. But like in like the training environment that she's come into, it's like we all expect such like we all expect so highly of her. So it's like even though we are young, 
we're all in the same boat and like even like if Iz makes a mistake it's not like she's gonna look at us and we're gonna be like oh don't worry like we'll sort it it's like everyone's on a sort of thing and I know that sounds brutal but I just think like the way she's dealt with it and how she's doing just like she's just gonna be unbelievable like she's so mature it's it's mad like I think she's doing unbelievable uh, no, I agree. And, and, and I love that. It's kind of that sink or swim attitude, isn't it? You're all there for a job. You all want to win stuff. So so why would you not pull that out of each other? No, it, it's, I was thinking as well, it's mad in the game, in the Loughborough game. I remember seeing Hallie, like, screaming at Izzy. And I was thinking, like, Jesus, like... But it's like, it's just so brutal. And it's like, obviously, like, we all just take it from each other. It's like, you have to take off everyone because everyone's given and we have such high expectations of each other no one's got room to be be young or new it's like we have to every i think to be fair i think that's what's so good for us we expect so highly of each other even in training like i know they won't mind me saying this like brie and holly was having like a tiff last week like fully like at each other in training and then afterwards like I, I was like joking about it and I said to my dad like it's mad like it's so intense like people are actually arguing and he was like that's how it should be like it just shows like so much passion and like everyone just wants to win so bad like we're all on each other like yeah I think it's really good uh, and, and you know what those those environments are, uh, are priceless we used to have the same at Bath like Pam and Ebony used to go at each other and we'd all have a crack and you we always used to talk about as being sort of like sisters because you could cross the line almost. You could, you could say stuff and you you knew it, you knew it was meant with the best intentions. And I think that's the sign of, of a culture that's that's growing and evolving. I want to talk about that relationship with with Liv then to really hone in on this wing attack. You know, for years I didn't want to play anywhere or go anywhere without Rach Dunn because she, I suppose she was my security blanket. I knew I could ping the ball into her from anywhere. This game against Loughborough, you were thirty feeds with her. And it just looked effortless. Is that sort of a trust thing that's grown between you two? Because that's probably the first time I've seen it this season. Uh, yeah, well, I think it's almost like, because this is obviously my third year at Pulse, even like with Liv and Berry, it's almost like, I feel like when I hear it or I see tweets, it's like people expect us to be like, oh, like this is a third year, like that connection should be so strong. But realistically, like I've never been a starting player yet. So I feel like, Last year I was coming on at half time, like I never really played with Barry. It was just like me and Sasha, and then like Liv would sometimes be on. So I think now we're actually given the chance to be play together consistently. I think this year it's going to really show like how strong our connection is. Um, and yeah, I I don't know what it is with Liv. I feel like I've always just loved playing with her. Like she's she's so strong. She's such um she's just such a strong target in there. And I think Defo now like we've started communicating more I, I do just think we're gonna like grow and grow really but we just I don't know we probably get on off the court as well like she's so funny and I think with her it's like we both just like enjoying it like we just want to have fun like when we're playing well I think that's the whole thing with like us as a team as well like when we're confident when we're enjoying it when we're playing well it almost feels like we're like I know it sounds like cocky because we've not really we've not done anything yet but like we're it's like when we're enjoying it, when we're smiling, like it genuinely feels like no one's going to touch us. I know I that sounds... No, it, it doesn't. And actually you're starting to see that on the court. And I want to I wanna pick up on that then individually for you because I talk about those 30 feeds in that game. Hannah Joseph down the other end um, had 16 feeds into Mary Chollock. So you can see the impact you had almost double the amount. But when I spoke to Fran Williams, it was very much to get into England, she had to win more ball. When you talked to El Carbwell, it was very much you um, you shoot you shoot ninety percent. You're in the England squad, you know that kind of thing. What are the traits of the wing attack? Like, are, are you bothered about your stats? I know England used to look at our stats a lot as a wing attack. How many feeds? How many centre pass receives? You actually aren't in the top ten for feeds at the moment. But I, w I wondered, like, if that and I was surprised. Is that a thing? Is that something you're looking at? Like, what parts of your wing attack are you really working on, and what is it that's going to make you? get into that England squad and stay in there? No, I wouldn't say I'm, like, a, a stat girl. Like, I've never really been, like, overly bothered about stats or... I think, for me, it's more just, like, individually. Um, and, it, like, I'm trying to make sure in my head that every game I'm learning. Like, my main thing is, like, I need to learn. I need to be getting better. I need to be 
looking at like parts of my game that aren't as strong and just constantly working on them I feel like in terms of England as well like is I don't know like I feel like I try not to look at that as the main picture it's like my head is just come like 100% on pulse and I'll like do as much as I can every week to get better for pulse and then if England comes in summer or whatever then obviously that's amazing but I feel like for me at the minute it's more just like how am I getting better every game so well let's pick up on that then what are some of the areas at the minute that you want to keep improving on and what does your training look like because you know people know shooters go to pose and they know defenders do their footwork so what what are the big areas for you and how does that equate into training uh I think at training recently it's more just been like trying to focus on how how we can use my strengths as much as possible because I think like especially the way we played against Thunder we weren't playing to our individual strengths as players so for me it's like I feel the best when like I'm I'm touching the ball a lot I'm I can see the space I'm using the space well um so it's more just like as a unit trying to play to each other's strengths more so in training we've been trying to work on like how um how we can get the most out of like chase downs and like just doing more prelim work so I can beat my player on speed because I feel like if I can get to a position where I've got space I'm running that's when I feel most comfortable but it's just like how can us as an attacking unit make like make that work for me more do you know what I mean? Yeah absolutely and I love that and that that links me nicely into to this sort of final piece about off the court because you talk there about your authentic self on the court and I find in netball it's safe right it's a really safe sport we're all sort of perceived to show this this picture of what netballers are and I was never a safe option on the court or off the court you know I've always had an opinion if the England team were in red I was wearing blue you know I was that kind of person and and this you to call the boxes for me as well of being your authentic self you don't you don't always go fit the mold you know you, you do, you're living your best life and I love that and I, I just wondered like is that something you're really conscious of is that how you get the best out of you is and is the sport welcoming that is that something that you really want to still push I think I think in anything you do it's obviously important to have balance um I think in the past maybe it's been like a bit the other way and <laughs> it's what yeah it's probably not worked in my favor but I think the only time I'm ever gonna get the best out of my netball is if everything off the court's kind of fitting into place as well I think that's why like moving to pulse was probably one of the best things in me in terms of like off the court I think they're so supportive like the way Sam is with us all it's like as long as we turn up on time we put everything into training she's so relaxed about like the off court stuff even like on game days, like we have to look smart. But if I've got if I've got grey joggers instead of black joggers, she's not bothered. And it's little things like that. It's just like feeling comfortable. I don't know. I, it's just something about like the environment. It's like it's not. When I say it, I don't want to say it as in like it's unprofessional because it's not. But Sam cares that you you're trying. You're putting physically the most effort in training. As long as you're turning up she, she, off the court, she, she, she lets you do what you want. And I think that works for me really well. So, yeah. yeah. No, finding that culture that fits you is, is, is so important through any part of your career. Um, mm. Quick word then on Scholes' gym, because I love looking on Instagram. And obviously, uh, that's up north. Um, yeah. Do you get a chance to get up there a lot? Is that something long term? I'll, to... I'll be so honest, my my brother literally does everything. <laughs> we we um it was like we opened it in the March and then wait, was it March? Oh no no, it was a whole year before, sorry. Um so we'd done all the prep, everything ready to open, and then literally a week later I had a convo with Sam and I was like, Dad, I think I wanna go to Pulse <laughs> And then my brother was like fuming bless him. Well he weren't even fuming but he must have been inside but he just handled that so well. So yeah, thank God my older brother literally carries that and I'm just in and out whenever I go back. But hopefully one day I might be back in Manchester to help him again. Well, I know, I know you, you, you're a close-knit family and I know you love you love home, you love Manchester. Quick one, is overseas on the cards? Is it something you'd love to do at some point? Oh God, I need to get a lot better if I'm considering that. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's the dream, but I've got a lot, <laughs> a lot of work to do if I want to consider that. But yeah, of course, yeah, that'd be the dream. Amazing. Um, well, listen, I always finish on. Uh, you know, they do these things where if you're a netball player, your position says a lot about you. So I was reading about wing attacks, and it says here that no one ever wanted that bib, and these players <laughs> gathered the least acclaim but had to work the hardest. What do you reckon? Oh, I think. Uh... Well, I was glad to get the wing attack bib because it took, <laughs> yeah, took me out of centre. <laughs> oh, as, as, as soon as they said, do you want to play wing attack at over centre, I dived on that bib so fast. <laughs> um, what was the other point you said? I forgot what else you said you about work, it. You work the hardest, Liz. You can say you do, yeah. Technically, I think there's a lot to think about it. <laughs> but yeah, 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 I like the wing attack bib. Well, um, listen, Liz, you've been an absolute joy to speak to. I, I will say this to people listening, that you came on and started the call going, I'm really nervous. I don't know. I, I don't know how I'm going to be on this. You've been absolutely brilliant. So thank you for sharing those insights. Good luck for the rest of the season. And we look forward to seeing how you get on, on and off the court. Thank you. Welcome to Worcester Arena. We've just finished round four of the Super League. It was the home side Seven Stars versus Manchester Thunder. Top of the table clash so early on in the season. I'm joined here by Seven Stars wing attack Jess Shaw. This is, of course, a wing attack special. We're hoping that Nat Metcalf is going to join us in a second. Apparently, they're having a debrief, Jess. I'm not sure they needed one. No, I don't think they did with that <laughs> performance. <laughs> I hope they should be here soon. It was a pretty dominant performance in the end. Manchester Thunder winning 65-50. But we wanted to do an attacking special this week so I thought who better to get in than to my favourite wing attacks in the country at the moment sitting in first and third in the feeds in the statistics um, Jess I wanted to talk to you about that wing attack position because I chatted to Liz goals earlier in the week yeah. and we sort of said it's one of those sort of underwhelming position the position that always gets looked over would you agree with that yeah I definitely agree I think um, a lot of wing attacks out there do a lot of work but I think it's just the unnoticed especially the off the ball stuff because sometimes you're not always going to get the ball but it's that kind of work that you do in the attack to pull the defense and then open up and the other mid court or the shooters absolutely talk to me about some of the specifics then because I think as a when you look at shooter you can easily go oh, it's the shooting stats you know you can go to post how many attempts you get defensively it's the intercepts it's the gains it's the deflections but for wing attacks it's not always that obvious obviously there's the feeds yeah. but there's a hell of a lot of movement that's going on and a lot of work off the ball as well yeah. Yeah, I think, um, like like you said, a lot of work off the ball. And I think the early prep on centre pass, but also the connection that you have with the goal attack to kind of pull that defence apart, open up first phase and then that deep second phase um, and then straight into your shooters. But like you said, obviously, we look at our feeds, but it might not be, sorry, <laughs> it might not be the feeds, um, obviously always going in, but I think it's just the work and the triangles that you do to open up the circle. And then I think that's when it opens up the circle a lot more and then you can let that ball go a lot easier into the circle. But it's a work before that to then open up that. Well, I want to talk about those partnerships in particular because um, as a long-standing wing attack, I used to drag Rachel Dunn <laughs> around the country with me to whatever yeah. club I was at. She was my uh, security blanket and she's on your bench now as well. So doing the work with the shooters, yeah. the shooting technical coach. But you've really begun a really solid partnership with South African international Ziggy Berger and you've almost brought her to life. Just talk to me a little bit about that partnership. Yeah, I think it's obviously great from last season and we continue to build that. And I think it's just her holding there. She's just always strong holding there. And then I just see that space and I just let the ball go. And I think it's just also watching to whether I give it on that first second or that third second. I think it's really key to mix it up to keep the defence guessing. Um, and I'm just excited to see what we can continue to do for the rest of the season. Explore a little bit more for me the one three seconds. It's a lot. I use that a lot in coaching. Yeah. Um, and what's so important about using that one to three seconds in the release? Yeah, I think because sometimes obviously the ball can go straight away and just turn and let it go because the defence heads down. But there's times where the defence are really on that. But if you turn away, kind of look somewhere else and then that third second back in because they've just kind of dropped their heads or they've gone to look for something else. So it's just having that composure on ball to not get scared to get done for three seconds, but just then confidence that Siggy's going to come free and then let that ball go. And that's something that's really noticeable about your game and also about Net Metcalfs, about how composed you stay and how focused you look on the circle is that something you work a lot in training because when we talk about seeing the options the temptation is you go from one to the other and don't come back to the circle yeah. but almost that understanding that Ziggy's going to be available yeah I think it's obviously the more confidence you do in training and obviously when things do get shut down obviously things will reopen because defense heads go down or they slack off a little bit for that second 
So I think it's just making sure you're calm on ball and actually controlled with it because then you can fake, pull the defence and just let it go. Um, but sometimes I do get caught looking in the circle for a bit too long when I should have played back. So <laughs> If you're not calm on the ball, you never get a hell ball. Yeah. That's, that's my job. I want to talk a bit more about those tactical elements then. We saw a thunder three over today. So that three over of three defenders getting over the line and really shutting down that yeah. space. I mean, how hard is that to break free? Can you just give a bit of understanding of what that looks like? Yeah, it's definitely hard, but I guess we've been working in training on breaking that three over. So we have someone attacking the middle, but then someone attacking that same side to kind of pull either off the middle person or on that wide. Um, or we can pull them as wide as we can and try and find the gaps, which we did in the game at times. But um, also going back on a centre pass, if they do do that three over, can we screen to then set up second phase if we get someone driving back on the backup? So. There's lots of different things out there, but I think it's just mixing it up and trying to see what we can do. I think we have that sort of textbook thing from a wing attacks, aren't we? They've got to feed, they've got to get out first phase, but we're seeing a lot of differences in the game. Actually, you and Nat Metcalf weren't the biggest high centre yeah. pass receives today, but that was on purpose, right? That was a tactical element. So as long yeah. as you're getting involved at some point in that second phase, or at least driving into the third, are you happy with that? Yeah, I think I used to always be like, if I don't get first phase, I'm not, doing, yeah, I'm not doing good as a wing attack. But I think there's obviously four other people on that centre pass that can be available. And actually setting up deep second phase, especially when you have a shooter like Siggy, if you've got the goal attack high, then deep second phase is actually a 1v1 instead of having that 2v1 in there. So it's just mixing it up depending on who we play against. Absolutely. Uh, talk to me about training, then you're getting further away from oh, me, Jess. We're going to keep you in. <laughs> talk to me about um, the training side. We've had some questions about sort of the agility and the footwork that you need to be doing as a wing attack. Is that something you work hard on? Because it, there's such little space out there, especially when you're playing against sort of a box defence or a real unit that are clogging up the middle. Yeah, I think uh, especially this season for me, I've done quite a lot of plyos in the weights room. Um, just kind of that quick step, lots of jumping, lots of hopping building that strength on single leg because I think the more balanced you are the quicker you can change off that change of direction and I think as a winger tag it's really important that you've obviously got a quick change of direction but then also mixing that up in terms of like obviously bodying up and um, just to mix it up and keep the defense guessing but I think it's a really important thing as a winger tag um, to have that agility. I think talking about the plyometrics, the jump and the bounce, um, really, really important. Do you watch any other players from around the world? I say that because Whitney Sooners, if you see her on Instagram, her plyo stuff and her speed agility and her footwork is insane yeah. for the Kiwi wing attack. It's funny you said to say that. I think they have a, I don't know what Instagram it is, but they have one over there that they do a lot of work with. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I've watched quite a lot of that and the footwork stuff that they do. Um, and then there's another guy that I follow on Instagram that does a lot of like plyos and things for change of direction. Um, and I've, yeah, just took quite a lot of his stuff to put into my own program. So I want to talk a little bit about the culture here at Seven Stars because you came off the back of last season. It was a fantastic season, but it was sort of, you were all thrown into the limelight. Yeah. Everyone went, oh, watch this yeah. thing. What are they going to do this year? How has that kind of culture grown with players adding in and, and the trust as well that Joe Tripp has put in you all? Yeah, I think obviously we built on last season, we had kind of no pressure, no one expected anything of us. Um, but I think just kind of the culture we've built here, like there's no no pressure as in, we obviously make mistakes out there, but I think everyone's just around us. And if there is a mistake, we get straight back on defense. And I think it's quite a fun environment. Um, and obviously we've got lots of different changes this year, which can obviously be hard in a bench when you don't know who's coming on and off. Um, but I think that's what's gonna kind of build us this season in terms of we've got so much competition but we're all trusting that and we if we do come off the court it's not because you maybe you've played bad it's actually we need something different out there and I think what this squad has got this year is that yeah absolutely and you saw that today tactically when Thunder were coming out with all kinds yeah. of different uh, defensive setups and structures we had another question in about uh, the pocket ball and, and getting to circle edge is that um, sort of relevant now because I used to say about feeders hello oh here she is we'll, we'll talk that, that Metcalf has just entered the building I hate I'd hate to think what a debrief is like if you lost you had a 15 goal win love I mean you could have been quicker I'll, I'll get back to you in just a second but sort of um, we talk about that pocket ball and, and wing attacks a lot of the time I go around and when I'm coaching it's all about get to the top of the circle but actually if you've got a wing attack that can feed from anywhere is that sort of irrelevant now yeah I think um for me, I do like the pocket in terms of obviously you get deep second phase. And I think if you have your other mid court, you can swing it top. I think there's a lot of variation. And as long as you're not too far to the baseline, I think 45, um, the ball can still go into your shooters quite easy. Um, but then just mixing it up, whether you body up on that second phase to get the ball or if you move um, onto it. 
Well, Nat Metcalf has joined us. She is in the room. <laughs> uh, the leading wing attack in the country at the moment. Uh, an impressive performance uh, this evening, 65-50 win over seven stars. And you got a rest as well. You went to the bench. Yeah, good game? Yeah, really good game. Thanks, Jess. Um, really enjoyed it. I think stars are an incredible side. Um, I think, Jess, you've had a phenomenal season so far and last year. So I think we knew that it was going to be a really tough game coming into this. So, yeah, really good to get a, a win on the board tonight. Well, I want to start with the tactical stuff. I've been picking Jess's brain, all things wing attack. Um, a different game this year, that short, sharp game. So we've seen Paige Reed in the shooting circle for you. And the short, sharp one twos, exits, could it be any closer body balls all the way down the court? How has that changed and adapted your game? Um, I really like that type of game. I mean, I love putting in a long feed. Wing attacks, we love to do that, don't we? Uh, yeah, um, but I think Paige has really like, challenged me in, into working on that short game as well and being able to feed a rotational circle. Um, so it's allowed me to be able to try and work on that front ball as well as giving the back ball at times. How hard is it then when you're playing like that to not get hooked into one thing? Because that's the danger, right? Yeah, definitely. And that's definitely something I still need to work on. I get so um, enticed in this front option. Um, but yeah, it's just making sure that we keep our vision up and ensuring that we've still got space in the circle. Because when you've got a rotational circle, defenders want to try and squish them together. So it's just making sure we're still using the whole circle. I mean, both of you have got quite dominant shooters. Ziggy, Ziggy definitely has her voice heard. Um, and Lois Pearson tonight, I mean, she's quite unassuming of what she does, but her baseline drives are brilliant. When you haven't got someone who's yelling and screaming at you like that, is it just important that you keep that vision open? Yeah, definitely. And I think both Lois and Paige and Elmer and Anya coming through the ranks, um, those guys are just so hungry for ball and uh, want to do well for the team. So I think playing sides and, and things like that and those one-twos um, are really good. And to be honest, they just do all the work and then I just get to pass on the ball. <laughs> just, just do all the work. Yeah, just drifting around yeah. that, I saw. Um, I want to talk about recycling the ball as well because this is a big thing in the game, right? Going back to the back, back up. Why and how we're using it? Like, is it better to be purposeful so you know it's happening or is it a pure panic sort of third second we've got no option going forward? Um, I think it's a mix, um, especially for me. I think sometimes, like I said, on the third second when I'm still hoping my shooter will kind of become free, I then panic and pass it back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's times where I look, actually I'm not happy, and I'll open up the other side instead of going back here to then open the other mid-court and instead of swinging it across to let the defence, I guess, come out on that. And now I want to talk about the swings around the circle then. You guys used that effortlessly today and it was really early. And I, look, again, when I go around, textbook netball is you don't swing from wide to wide and yet you used it so well to open up the circle. I think with that, the key thing is, I think you taught me this, that you've got to do it quickly, otherwise it's not on. <laughs> uh, you've got to do the wide to wide swing really quick, otherwise it's not on. And I think being able to just be more efficient in the, in the end third. So rather than recycling it and doing numerous phases of play, because we all know that gets really tiring <laughs> in a 60 minute game. Um, I think if we can be efficient and not need our shooters churning in the circle, we can get that wide to wide swing nice and quick. As long as the other mid court repositions and gets top, <laughs> Karen would be saying. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, straight from the coach. Yeah. This is why they debriefed Jess, they just needed to chat about that. Well, listen, I'm gonna let you guys go in a minute. I just wanna quickly touch on the international stuff because when you are playing a short, sharp game like that, we saw against Australia, it, it's not always as successful, especially because they get around yeah. the body. So how hard is it then to transition if you're playing a season like that into sort of the international game that Thurlby wants? Yeah, definitely. And I think that is something that's still a work on for me at international. When the short game's working, brilliant. And then when that is being shut down, when the defender's getting in front, being able to still deliver that back ball, really important. So I think testing myself in um, Super League seasons and as soon as you get back into the England environment, getting that straight into your game is really important. Yeah, well, that variety happens because it's not just, of course, the Australians. You then got the Kiwi zone, then you've got, got the Jamaicans and the difference that they can do with the elevation as well. Is there anything you specifically do throughout the season in terms of training to make sure you're on top of that stuff? Um, we do a lot of feeding work. Um, Karen's an amazing attacking coach, so having her at Thunder is brilliant for us. So anything that we want to work on, we'll like feed back in, in the week after a game and, and make sure we do that in training. But I think just ensuring that we're having time feeding, working on how to break down a split circle, um, all things like that I think are really important perfect well listen I am going to let you go well you've cooled down I mean you've got no excuse I'm going to go and let you cool down um, Jess I know we don't always get the we I'm putting myself in your category guys we don't always get the accolades as wing attacks um, but I, I know the work rate that you're doing I know the training I also know how much leadership come from both of you as well um, it's been an impressive season so far this game didn't disappoint this evening I mean a dominant Thunder performance but still loads of lessons learned by seven stars we look forward to you guys in the rest of the season of course catching up with you internationally as well thank you ladies
Thank, Thank you. you.